people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to FNAF News. In today's video, we've gotten our first look at the interactive novel based on Ruin, some new living room gameplay for the full release of The Joy of Creation, major console port updates for Into the Pit, Help Wanted 2, and even Ruin. So that and so much more we're going to be talking about in today's FNAF News video. And so to kick off today's video, let's talk about some brand new book releases. Because back in August, I neglected to mention that the Glow in the Dark coloring book has been released. But as for a more recent book release, we've got the first interactive novel the week before. If you're like me and many other FNAF fans online, you may have noticed that this book was getting stocked, ironically enough, a week before its proper release date. And then also available right now is the fifth volume of Fazbear Fright graphic novels. And actually, speaking of graphic novels, we've gotten a whole bunch of updates on the first volume of graphic novels for the Tales from the Pizzaplex series. Previously, we've taken a look at the cover for the book featuring Ballora from one of the stories. With this novel adapting under construction, Habs and Clither phobia. Strangely enough though, that cover has now been outdated and replaced with this cover. They removed a lot of the shadows in this illustration as well as changed up a bunch of Ballora's colors. They even changed her kind of top clothing piece on her chest to be flesh colored. So they've removed her shadows, they've changed her color, and now she's exposing herself. I'm really hoping that this change of color is just an error because this does look so much worse than the original cover. But moving on, we did get a preview for each of the stories included in this graphic novel. Starting off with Under Construction, which Ben Sawyer, who is the illustrator for the story, did release a more finished version of this panel. Up next, we got a preview for Haps, featuring everyone's favorite Haps from the story Haps. And lastly, a preview for Clithrophobia. This is that story that features Blora that we saw in the cover. I've seen a lot of positive reactions to all the previews for these stories, and I can understand why when Blora's looking at me like that. But I would love to know, what are your thoughts on the first volume of Tales from the Pizzaplex graphic novels? But we are not done with the book news. In fact, we're not even done with the Pizzaplex, because previously we talked about the third volume of Scholastic's interactive novel series, with that book being based on Ruin, titled Escape the Pizzaplex. You are Cassie, a young girl trapped inside Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. Chased by terrifying animatronics as well as the night guards, you got to do whatever it takes to make it out alive. Can you escape, or will it be game over before dawn? And recently, the cover for this novel was revealed, and I'll say it's continuing the trend of these interactive novel covers just being the best out there. You got Monty with some shattered glasses ripping through what appears to be either a cloth or even the wall itself. And once again, with this interactive novel being based on Ruin, it's going to be very interesting to see how much it diverts or maybe sticks close enough to the story of the actual DLC. But I guess we'll have to wait until April 1st to find out. And no, that is not an April Fool's joke. The release date of this novel was bumped up from the 6th of May to the 1st of April. So we're going to be getting it a month early. Moving on now to some merchandise news. Let's start off with Sanchi actually because you may have seen by now but they have released two brand new plushies of Fredbear. It seems like these designs are based on the Fredbear plushie from the sister location private room with one of them even sporting a walkie talkie from that night. They have been and still are available to pre-order right now. They should be shipping out in October and then next up for plushie merchandise let's talk about U2s because they have shown off some concept art for an upcoming plushie of the Mimic. They did already reveal in a recent AMA that a plushie of the Mimic would be on its way. So here's the concept art. I'd love to know what do you think? I think his arms might be a little bit too thin, but other than that, my boy looks perfect. And he should be releasing in early 2025. Also, in a previous FNAF News video, we talked about Tubbs and Numskull getting the license to make FNAF merchandise. And recently, we've gotten our first look at the Freddy Fazbear and Foxy Tubbs ducks. These are little collectible rubber duckies dressed up as various pop culture characters. And we did hear in the past that Freddy bought Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy would be getting tubs. So this is our first look at Freddy and Foxy. These guys look so, so freaking adorable. And hopefully we can see Bonnie and Chica soon because like I said, they were revealed to be getting tubs ducks. And then lastly for merchandise, let's talk about Hex because their brand new Shadow Wave is available right now featuring glow-in-the-dark products including the much-anticipated Shadow Bonnie and Shadow Freddy plushies, some hoodies of the characters, shirts, sweatpants, and even stickers as well. And then as for upcoming plushies recently, Daco showed off a 3D model of the Ennard plush. The model of this guy looks absolutely incredible and actually a pretty fun detail. In the concept art, I believe the eyes on Ennard's body were actually printed on, but then for this 3D model, as you can see, they will be button eyes for the final product. Just one of those small details that I absolutely love. So massive shout out to Hex. This guy looks incredible so far. And then we've also gotten brand new prototypes for the Glamrock Chica plushie, as well as the upcoming Bon Bon hand puppet plush. Both of those guys look adorable, but we're still not done with 
of Hex. Because if you were at PAX West, you may have seen Daco carrying around some extra Hex plushies, with one of these being an updated prototype for the Roxanne plushie, as well as another look at the upcoming Circus Baby plushie. It actually looks like the real Circus Baby is kind of side-eyeing the plushie of Baby. But then, of course, the main attraction from Hex at PAX West was the brand new Funtime Foxy plushie. This guy was up on display at the prize counter, and if you won one of JTOF's minigames, you'd get the chance to win this prototype. And I think by now, we all know who won that game. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. And then Hex has also showed off a prototype plushie of Monty. And honestly, he might be my new favorite from the line of security breach plushies. He just looks so awesome. The details on his legs are fantastic. I think his eyes, more specifically his sunglasses, might need a bit of adjustment. And also his guitar looks more buff than he is. But other than that, Monty looks fantastic. And then speaking of PAX West, Deregular Sauce, who is the incredible creator behind the amazing props you saw at the booth, they've actually shown off some behind the scenes construction for the very various props, including Jackie, the brand new character debuting in Secrets of the Mimic. This prop was up on display in the queue to get in line to play the Secret of the Mimic demo. Absolutely incredible to see the construction behind these characters. And there's also quite a few details that you may have missed when you were at PAX West, most notably a speaker inside of Jackie's mouth. And then Sauce also showed off some behind the scenes construction of the Caution Bot. And then Sauce also showed off some behind the scenes construction of the brand new Roxanne costume. Showing off the construction of her face as well as her hair, her chest as well. Super fantastic props as always. It's always amazing to see the behind the scenes process of these props being made. The next up, let's talk about the Joy of Creation, a fanverse game that got a demo not too long ago for the FNAF 10th anniversary, though that demo did only include one level, which was the office level. If you know T-Jock though, and you've been following the development, you'll know that there are many more levels in the final game. With Nixon recently showing off some brand new gameplay footage of the living room level. In this footage, we can see a bit of the brand new layout for the living room itself, some brand new gameplay mechanics involving watching the cameras to either speed up or freeze the characters, and then, of course, another incredible jump scare by Ignited Foxy, with Coco Beans, the animator for the Joy of Creation, showing off some behind the scenes of the making of that jump scare, as well as some other miscellaneous animations we saw in the brand new gameplay. So another fantastic look at the Joy of Creation. Like I said, there was a demo released last month for the anniversary which was absolutely fantastic. The full game is set to be released next year in 2025. And actually, speaking of the anniversary, man, I'm killing these segues today. Into the Pit was another project we got released for the 10th anniversary last month. And to celebrate the 10th anniversary, Mega Cat has updated the title screen to include a birthday cake with 10 candles. So if you do want your boy Spring Bonnie back, you can toggle this in the settings menu. But the main thing everyone's asking for in regards to Into the Pit is when are the console ports releasing? We got kind of Jabay with all of the trailers and marketing material for the game teasing that console release would happen on the launch day. Though of course that didn't happen and then we heard that console ports would be out by the end of August. And well, here we are still. So what exactly is going on with the console ports? Well, on August 28th, Mega Cat put out this tweet. We're patiently waiting for the launch patches approval for consoles and expect to have final dates any day now. We expected it this week and it could be any day at this point. We'll let fans know as soon as we receive the final approval. So while we still unfortunately don't have a release date for you console players, it does seem like it should be coming very, very soon. Considering they were expecting the approvals to happen that week, and well, this post is now a week old, it seems like you just gotta wait a teeny, teeny bit longer, but hopefully we should have a release date any second now. And actually, Into the Pit's not the only FNAF game getting a brand new console release pretty soon, because in a recent Nintendo Direct, it was revealed that Ruin, as well as Help Wanted 2, will be arriving to the Nintendo Switch this holiday season. Now, of course, that is a pretty broad release date, but at least it's good to know that these two titles will be releasing on the Switch by the end of the year. And that is going to do it for all of the FNAF news. Of course, there's still a lot more to talk about, so stay on the lookout for some brand new FNAF news videos coming up very, very soon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.